Uh-huh. Yeah. And I mean, just, and, and I mean, everybody, I mean, we had LA with 1,200. Everywhere we go, it's a standing room only. Every movie I've ever shown has been sold out. I mean, I don't know what they're, I mean, it, but, but again, they use sophomoric psychology of look. He's not popular. That's what Psychology Today did. They said Alex had no, you know, basically Alex says he had friends, but we couldn't prove it. Alex said he has a good family life, but he he wouldn't let us talk to his family. You know, when yeah. when I have a great family life and great friends and great high school, it's a little too wild. It was a little too fun. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, again, it's meant to sell the idea that we're like these outcast kooks when we are the majority. Professor Stephen Jones, stay with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. Tall and strong. Would you stand tall and strong if you saw all the things that were wrong? Well, Professor Stephen E. Jones did. Kind of like uh, Galileo saying that the uh, Earth orbited the sun, not the sun orbiting the Earth. And the truth is coming out, and the system is scared. Professor Jones, do you agree with me that, or, or give us your take on this, that we see all these new hit pieces coming out now? Because they understand 9-11 truth has just continued to grow and didn't go away. It wasn't just a political thing of bashing Bush, that stage terror is something that people really understand now. I, I, I do agree with you there, Alex. I think that we are making progress worldwide, not, not just the United States. I mean, uh, Niels Herod is uh, Professor Herod in Denmark, gets calls from all over. He told me that he's been in uh, the media a great deal in Europe. So I know that in Europe, uh, people are waking up, uh, including Russia, of course, and uh, other countries. In this country, it seems like you know every September 11th, we're coming up again, <clears throat> two days, and uh, we get this burst of interest, which is good. But like you say, then the like the Nat Geo program, we get this uh, mocking, basically calling us truthers and. And look at these guys' psychology, you know, psychoanalyzing us that we're so paranoid. I mean, that was the term they used. Um, as if we can't do science. Uh, that, that's the beauty of science, as I've repeated, Alex, is that anyone, regardless of belief system, can get the same result. If anyone will take a, a dare here, look at the World Trade Center dust, you'll see these. Uh, chips that are red on one side, gray on the other, very distinctive. And then do the test that we did, and you'll get the same result. Yeah, you're finding the nanothermite, <clears throat> I mean, itself unignited. Their right. one issue that had any credibility, the one shred watching the program several times that I thought had any basis, mm -hmm. was this claim, well, your chain of custody. But you have FEMA coming in two days after, locking it down, saying federal crime to even take photos. They cut up the steel, ship it off, but you and others were able to go to the different states and cities that have gotten it, you know, to build memorials with it. You were able to get it for people that owned homes or apartments nearby where it was still wrecked. Right. I mean, I right. mean, speak to that because you've got a bunch of different places you've gotten this. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we've studied uh, in detail six samples now, if I count correctly. Four are reported in the paper, but we've been looking at more samples, and they all have the same signature of the red-gray material, these chips that uh, still blow up, the red material side blows up after all these years. And, and let me say, in the paper we make an, uh, uh, an effort to spell out the chain of custody for those samples that we reported on in the paper. We pointed out the distinct chemical similarity, the chemical signatures being the same in all four samples. So really, uh, this basis, uh, so maybe someone... Could, what, what could it be? They salted these samples. How could they reach these independent collectors and New York citizens uh, who did save some of the dust? And I've heard of others since. And I had a call this morning. Another fellow had saved some dust. So, you know, people were saving it as a, as a souvenir, nothing else. And for, to suppose that they salted these is, now that's really <laughs> stretching credulity. So I, I haven't heard that argument too much recently. The one argument I have heard recently, Alex, is, uh, well, uh, Professor Eager, he, he's, he'll find anything. He didn't complain about the chain of custody. He was complaining. He said, well, this has got to be primer paint, just paint that was put on the steel, and it's not explosive at all. It's just paint, you know, ordinary primer paint. Well, 
We found a sample of steel. This is actually at a memorial in, uh, at Clarkson College in New York State. Like I say, there are these uh, uh, samples around, and this one happens to be at Clarkson. Uh, I contacted an individual who lives near, nearby. Uh, she contacted the fellow that actually put the memorial together. The, uh, well, he does uh, welding. So he put that together. He collected for us, for her, and then she sent it to us, a sample right off the steel of the actual primer paint that was still on the World Trade Center steel. So we tested this primer paint, and it's not the same as these red chips, not at all. All of the primer paint samples show potassium, magnesium, and zinc. None of the chips, when you, I'm talking about when you get a fresh surface for both, right? Paint and chips. Look at the fresh surface. Compare. Professor, stay there. We got a break. Come okay. back, continue with that on right, the other I... side as we debunk the hit piece put out by National Geographic. Stay right. with us.